are back in the booth, and my guest now is Gabe Zickerman, author of Gamification by Design. Gabe, thank you so much for being with us. Hi, Mac. So, how does gamification apply to open source? Well, that's a really interesting question. Uh, and when you know, I was thinking about OSCON this year and what I was going to say, and you know, pitching a sort of talk for it, I thought you know the main thing that I think open source needs to learn from gamification is how to refocus on the customer. I think the absent person in the discussion of open source is the end user. How to design for them? How to think about their motivation? Why do they care about open source? What do they get out of open source? You know, and I have actually been racking my brain, reading a lot of stuff, thinking a lot about you know how we can apply the motivational design principles of gamification open source. And so that's going to be the sort of core part of my, I guess, plenary talk tomorrow morning, mm -hmm. where it's all about like, you know, some big, mildly controversial ideas right. about what open source needs to do. Okay. So are there, are there challenges applying gamification to something that's by its very nature defined as loosely coupled? Well, I think there's going to be some key sort of challenges for open source people to embrace gamification. And, and let's just set aside the idea that in general, we don't think a lot about the mass market end user. Okay. So that's a core problem, but sure. let's just set that aside. Sure. I, I think the biggest thing that uh, bedevils folks interested in kind of open software movements as it relates to gamification is this idea that they're going to have to constrained to some extent what kinds of actions they care about and what kinds of things they want to reward and incentivize mm -hmm. and design for because part of the process of designing for uh, gamified systems is actually about constraint not about openness it's about figuring out what actions a user needs to take in sequence in order to have a really great experience especially up front mm -hmm. uh, we typically think of that as the onboarding process in a game and onboarding in a game is extremely scripted today it's really a scripted experience, even though to the end user it feels very you know, expansive, like mm -hmm. being in a sandbox. But we've really changed that model, and we've actually scripted it out. I think that's a kind of philosophical challenge for sure. open source developers yeah. to think about building products in which they actually have to put themselves in the end user's shoes, think about their first, like, especially five minutes or so, their first five minutes in really, really great detail and design an experience around that. I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge, yeah. but I think it's a great challenge. So should gamified elements be layered on top of open source, or is it something that needs to be baked in? Well, let's think about the couple of different audiences who could benefit from gamification and open source. So the first one is end user communities of mm -hmm. customers. And in that regard, as I always advocate, as I talk about in gamification by design, you know, it's all about building those gamification items as close to the core, the heart of the product as possible. Mm -hmm. Some people describe gamification as a game layer, but that's actually a pretty false description of it. It's not frosting on top of a core mm -hmm. product. It's about rethinking many of those core interactions in the frame of what we know about games and what we know about in what engages end users in the context of games. The second audience is actually the developer community, and I think they're not really addressed very well today in terms of motivation incentive and their connection to open source. There's a lot of like initial motivation around open source. It's like, we're going to stick it to the man, you know, which I guess the man has shifted over the years from Microsoft to Apple sure. or whoever's like the most hated character right. today, but we're going to like stick it to him. But you know what? That's not a sustainable way to ensure engagement with mm -hmm. people. Long-term engagement is less about the, um, frankly, FU orientation than it is about the right kind of metered rewards and incentives that map to somebody's individual desires for achievement, exploration, socializing, um, you know, and killing in the case of some of them. Sure. Those are the game player types. Right. So I think we address both of those markets using gamification. I think we start building those elements of engagement into all kinds of software products and platforms from the beginning. We will definitely have a more engaged, a more productive, um, and certainly a more directional community. So last question for you, shifting gears a little bit. This is sort of riffing off of something that you brought up in a recent Radar post where you talked about the, uh, the, the issues of addiction in gamification. What, how do you think that should be addressed? What responsibility did those creating gamified experiences have to bring on to make sure that they're not getting people too involved in these things or they're addressing it in a way that's appropriate? Well, in, in mid-September, I, I have this event called Gamification Summit that I'm the chair of. And so one of the big kind of discussions at G Summit in New York is going to be about the ethics, boundaries, kind of natural limits of gamification, and how should we use it. In order to have that discussion, we have to have a lot of people in the room. You know, we need to have a core group of people who are very interested in the subject and who care profoundly about motivational design and creating engaging systems mm -hmm. to get together and talk about what does it mean in health? What does it mean in education? What does it mean, you know, in 
marketing, accounting, you know, advertising, and so on. And also, of course, all those people are together to learn from each other and build systems that are more effective. That's why we've put them all together. Mm -hmm. in, at its core, we have to consider, I think, two key issues. One of them is informed consent, and that is to say, you know, gamified experiences need to disclose mm -hmm. that they're using these techniques, I think, in the big picture. And that's a little hard for people to swallow, but that probably needs to happen, um, much like we have to disclose, you know, many other things which are potentially, um, you know, uh, create conflict for folks or create uh, challenges for people. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing is we have to agree to a policy, I think, as designers in which we do no harm. It's right. essential for us to not do harm right. to others, and we should consider what those boundaries are. Luckily, almost everybody involved today in gamification, I don't know everybody personally, but almost everyone, everyone that I know involved in gamification, you know, really believes in those two ideas. Sure. So I don't think this is going to be very hard, you know, a very, very hard sell. And, and it would behoove them to address it, right? I would think so. And I think that part of it at minimum, the idea of ethics and openness and, you know, good communication with customers is definitely something that open source and gamification have in common. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Thank really you, Matt.